What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Should We Cover It uh, show every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time on Twitch. The OP noobs, the overpower noobs, OP and team comes together to discuss the trailer of all the games coming out this week. And we've got quite a short list uh, this week as approaching Christmas. There's really, we're really looking at the very last titles until 2016 rolls in. It might not be the most interesting show. It's also going to be a short one, but thank Thankfully, I'm accompanied by the cream of the crop right here at OP Noobs. I am naming Chris Kellogg, Rendark, aka Peter O'Brien, Dan Wheeler, AJ Malardi, Lethargy, Caitlin, Alucar, and of course, the one and only, the guy you'll never see, Stylo Max. So, I'm going to get the show rolling straight up. The concept is pretty simple. Uh, we start with the beta keys. Uh, Alucard is supposed to send you the links to the website so that you can uh, use them as a reference to sign up to those betas. They're usually free, sometimes they're closed betas, sometimes they're open betas. But at the but at the end of the day, we try and connect you to all the games that are coming out for testing on a weekly basis. So please come back every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And this time we started... That's every day, if you're on time. At the end of the show, I'll also make a quick announcement about the new show that's coming with OP News that we're very excited about. Uh, but before we get there, you could actually find out just by going on our website, opnews.com. We're going to get this show started. The Should We Cover It show. Does everybody have their little digit on the mouse to press the click button and get the trailer started? Press 1 if you think we should review it. Press 2 if you think we should toss it. I believe that's the code, if I'm not wrong. Let's get started. The first game is called, is a beta, it's called Amygdala. Amygdala, everybody press play. Peter, right over at you. Psychological horror set in the snowy mountains of the north. Discover the hidden secrets behind the experiments related to ancient myths and an unknown past. A project created thanks to the Unreal Engine 4 for Windows platform, totally in support of Oculus Rift. Caitlin? Nova VR is located in Rome, Italy, and crap, I lost the page, <laughs> so that is all I can tell you for right now. I love it. you're such a cursor. Um, hey, it's an, Yeah, yeah, for Caitlin, it's an Italian game, which I'm all for because it's a relatively, I, I, I believe it's a relatively thin industry, and the Italians, I would argue, if you look at their cinema, would have a lot to say in storytelling, at the very least, in video games. This uh, does look like uh, the the typical, uh, at least from the, the trailer we're watching right now, the typical type of... Uh, in the game that we've seen lately, including uh, we did a great review on this game called Stairs, uh, which is what reminds me of, written by Marcus Hess, uh, who's not here today. But uh, any comments, questions? Um, are you guys excited about it? Do you see? Do you see potential, Chris? Uh, Chris, uh, your microphone is muted. You're going to have to unmute it. I no. apologize. I'm so used to using push to talk with these days. Um, yeah. I noted that it had Oculus Rift support at the beginning, and um, this is one of the nicer looking games I've seen for Oculus in a while. Uh, and I can see it being really, really scary. It might be uh, kind of similar to a lot of horror games we've played before, but it's always way scarier when it's an Oculus Rift, no matter what you're doing. Um, and also, uh, it, it said it was based on the Philadelphia experiment, which maybe just look that up real quick, which sounds like a pretty crazy thing, um, which is supposedly like an actual U.S. government experiment that may or may not have been a hoax. So that sounds kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, for those two reasons, i got to support this game. And uh, we can't hear you either. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Caitlin. I have been waiting for a good horror game for weeks. I mean, I'm hoping that it will be interesting enough for me to play it. But I like horror games a lot. And so I'm very hopeful. And I think you're not the only one. I mean, I think horror just kind of generally pleases the gamer as a genre. It's always something that, that gets us going. Just like in the movies, I'd say. Uh, AJ Malardi, what, what you've got on this? Um, uh, I mean, as you know, Chris has an Oculus, and I've had the chance to play some games on the Oculus, and honestly, it looks good, but I'd be very curious to see how it would play on that. Um, I mean, as the game itself, it looks pretty solid, the graphics look good, um, my only quirk with, uh, horror games, though, is are the, uh, scarce cliche, so, I mean, from what I can see, it looks pretty good, but... I think if it's really smooth and fluid with the Oculus, that would really set it um, 
above and beyond. So, I mean, I would definitely check it out for sure. I would be anxious to review it or take a look at it for sure. We're going to be uh, juggling only a couple of traders tonight. By the okay. way, we have... Can you hear me now? I heard you before. No, Nothing? I no, I do. Yeah. I okay, I don't know. Something messed up with my Skype. I think Skype. I think it's Skype's doing it too. I can hear you, yeah, not because, at all. And then uh, suddenly you came back. So normally I should be fine. Well, the yeah. good news is we only got a couple of traders to cover tonight. By the way, we'll be giving games away, two main games. Uh, Adukar will make the announcement around, and I will be sending the, the keys. Uh, we're going to do a little voting system. If you want to check out the games we're giving away, zero display on the front page of opinions.com. But the good thing is we only have a couple of traders to go about tonight. So I'm going to pass on the microphone to most of you, pretty much on every trader. So be sure to, to be ready and get a couple comments. And on that count, I'm going to call you out Ethergy aka Rain aka April. I'm not sure what to call you anymore. Uh, hey, are you into horror games at, at all, April? I am. I like a lot of horror games. This looks like a throw, almost like they redid Area 51. If you remember the old arcade game, oh, yeah, oh, that's I can't game. tell you how many quarters I threw in there, but um, I'm really kind of interested in it just because that's all I could think of when I watch it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a legit comparison. Uh, then, it it looks interesting. I'm not a huge uh, horror genre buff. I mean, I like the games, but I've also never tried the Oculus Rift. So I think with the Oculus Rift, that would really kind of make the experience for me. So I'm pretty interested in seeing how it pans out, and if I ever get into that, checking it out. So yeah, it looks solid to me. Looks cool. All right. And then I guess uh, it's it's definitely signed up to the beta. Uh, Alucard should have sent the link. Yes, Alucard sent the link. Alucard, you are improving. Uh, the next game we'll be uh, we'll be playing is called Storm and United. Storm oh, yeah. United. Everybody press play, and that's uh, obviously a game Alucard is excited about. Peter, right over at you. Storm United is a class-based multiplayer first-person shooter bringing top-tier competitive SPS, FPS fun through six different game modes. Four distinct classes and 30 plus weapons in a variety of available maps. Caitlin? Pixel Beam Studios is a team of 16 with offices located in Zhangzhou and Chengdu, China. They say that the past few years they have dedicated themselves to create a flexible framework to allow a steady growth of Storm United. They aim to release the game on Steam Early Access soon and will keep improving Storm United with the feedback of their community for the following years to come. Am I the only guy here who feels some golden golden eye influence in this? I don't know why. I look at this and I don't know if it's the graphics thing. I don't know. I uh, I see I see golden eye here. Uh, AJ. Uh, first thing I saw when first thing I thought when I saw this was Halo. Um, this looks a lot a lot like Halo, even the way the characters look a bit. Um, I don't know, that's kind of really bothering me. Uh, there's a lot of influence definitely pulled from Halo, especially even like how the maps look and are textured. Um, it kind of looks like Halo. I mean, that's all I can... That's, that's a bad thing, I can't get past to you. that roadblock. That, that's a bad thing, according to you. I mean, it, you it have to can defend be good, because it's like... I mean, it can be a good thing, because, I mean, I haven't been that impressed with the Halo games if they can make uh, Halo games lately. Sorry. Don't sugarcoat um, it, AJ. What is wrong with the what is wrong with the Halo series? And go right ahead, because I'm sure a lot of people would agree with you. Um the Halo series they kinda got cutesy with um different stuff like uh the special things you can have like the shields and the jetpacks and it all kinda got a little ridiculous and over the top I thought. I enjoyed Halo one and two multiplayer the best. Um the later ones kind of had too much. It was it was just chaos. I thought um, from but, a stra- you feel like it actually had a neg- negative impact on the strategic a- aspect of playing the game. Um, I yeah, I guess so. Because like you you could just find cheap ways to kill people, like using certain combinations of stuff and. Uh, yeah, just in, you know, the whole sprinting thing. I did not like that when Halo introduced the sprinting concept. I like the fact that Master Chief only had one speed, but in, like, I think it was Halo 3, you could start to sprint, which, eh. It was like, oh, yeah. man, you're kind of making it like Call of Duty. Really wish yeah. you didn't go down that road. 
Um, but yeah, so like back to this game, it looks a lot like the later Halos, which um, eh, I mean, it could be good if it's got a couple of tinks or things that are tinkered with. But first glance, that's just that mental roadblock I had that screamed Halo at me. I'm going to pass you the microphone, Caitlin, but before, is, uh, is there anybody part of the call who's called Optimus Noob Gaming, or is that an actual coincidence who actually have a real noob on the channel? Because if, if, if you're not already one of us, you should totally reach out to us and apply because, well, because we're OP noobs. So Optimus Noob Gaming, none of you guys? Then yes, please, uh, please reach out to us. I'm Fred at OP Noobs, Chris at OP Noobs. Uh, Come on to the overpowered noobs. Chris, uh, Caitlin, wh- what were you, uh, what were you gonna say? I think that you're right, AJ. It looks very familiar, but as someone who's never really enjoyed Halo, probably because when Juggernaut mode came out, my friends knew I was so bad with the controller, they could just hand it to me and then beat on me. Um, but you know what? They have different classes, which is very Borderlands esque, very, I mean, even Destiny esque, which could be really fun. It looks beautiful. I would play it. I like shooters, and I like them especially with my mouse. That's hilarious. If you look at the chat, you've got Alucard saying, I'm raising my hand. <laughs> uh, um, Chris and, and then uh, Lissergy. Chris first. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I kind of, I mean, actually, now that I mentioned it, I kind of agree. It does look a little like Halo, but it looks super fast-paced and really slick. And I know I'm a sucker for arena combat games generally. Uh, but I could see uh, this being fun if it was executed right and at least offered something a little different. I feel like I couldn't uh, tell from the trailer that it, if it offered anything unique on an arena FPS. There's a lot that's been done well for almost 15 years, so it's hard to really improve upon that formula or at least make it interesting again. Uh, but if they can do that and... Ah, you just went mute. Oh, it's sorry, I just went mute for some reason. Uh, if they can do that, and I'm hoping they can, then this is a game I would absolutely play. Uh-huh. Yeah, Gosh. I agree with you. This is this is Gosh. pretty good. No, I agree with you. It looks good, Chris. It looks like uh, the quality is definitely there. So I, w- I would check that out, especially if it's free. It's a beta, so you're you're really not risking much. Uh, Lethargy. Alucard, it's desperate to speak. So I raised my hand. Right. Oh, okay. Him. Alucard, you raise your hand. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I get a turn. <laughs> Holy crap! People noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, first off, I streamed the crap out of this back in April when it first started up. I remember. Um, and yes. a lot more since then. Um, yes, that whole um, Halo comment, I'll just say don't judge a book by its cover and leave it at that. Uh, from that point, um, I mean, it's fun. I know you were saying uh, it's, you know, as long as it has a little tweaks or whatnot. It has those. Wait, do you guys still hear me? Because I'm thinking. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, you're fine. All right, cool, we, cool, we can hear cool, you just cool. fine. Um, but it's it is fun. It re- it does remind me in a sense of Halo, but not Halo the game itself. It's just how fun Halo was at that time. Mm. So I'm definitely gonna buy the our us uh, the four pack once this holiday sale because we're right around the corner for a Steam sale, and I'm gonna get the four pack and I'm gonna make Fred over here. Play with me. Don't worry, Fred. You'll be on my team. You'll be you'll be taken care of. Put me on the other team so I can kill both. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I play with these guys all the time. They're really cool dudes. Um, they're really immersed in their community. They they always really listen to the community. So they really take uh, everyone's advice into consideration and they implement it. So I find that really cool. And I'm done boasting about the game. Yeah, and there's just no chance I'm ever going to play an FPS with you again, but a movie... No, it was that one then, time. It's just not going to happen, man. Uh, ben oh. Weider. I was just going to jump on Alucard's note there. I thought it was really cool towards the end of the trailer. There's actually an interface within the client of the game itself to submit feedback um, in the form of things you like, things you don't like, things you want to tweak, balances you want to make, and that's something cool. Um, a lot of developers like this will go to forums, things like that, but having something so accessible, I think they're going to get a lot of good feedback from it. So that was a great decision on their part. How big of a studio, uh, Kitley? I know, I know you give us some description, but what are we looking at here? It's a team of 16. Oh, that's small. That's hats off for that. Hats off for producing something yeah. like that with a team, of team team. But good stuff, man. Hey, should we should we think about this for your uh, E for I? Uh, yeah, definitely. That's, totally, that's, definitely. that's absolutely yeah. for yeah. Chris. Servers in a few places, and I when like people actually get think. on, big big games, awesome games. Nice, nice. Very competitive. All right, 
uh, let's move on to the next game. The next game is, and after the beta, we'll be giving the first game away. So stick around, and the first game that we're giving away is Book of the... Wait, let me get... Let me get that correct. The Book of Unwritten Tales number two, which is a point and click game, supposedly pretty good uh, graphically. I can send you the link later on. I will be giving it away by asking you guys to pick a number from one to hundred and whatever number you're closest to from the one in my head, you will be the lucky, lucky winner. <laughs> Moving forward, the next game is Legends of Calasia. Everybody press play for Legends of Calasia. Rolling, uh, Peter, right over at you. Legends of Calasia, or however you want to say it, is a simultaneous turn-based single and multiplayer fantasy world conquest strategy game. That's a lot of adjectives. They are currently uh, developing for PC, Mac, and mobile tablet. tablets. I can speak. Caitlin? Boom Zap Entertainment is a casual games developer based in Singapore. It was formed in 2005 and has released 40 games to date that are ported on various platforms. Anyone on this? I take first calls. Then this looks like something you'd play. You know why it reminds me of the... Um, I may be completely off here, but that, that pirate... You know, I think I'm completely off. Reminds no, you're me of right. The, yeah? You're right. Uh, yeah. The, right? Uh, what, what was that game called? Uh, Swords and Crossbones. Yeah. Something or other. Honestly, it wasn't memorable. I didn't really dig yeah. it that much. But no, this is really not, not something that's too up my alley. I'm not a massive uh, like trading card game player from what it looks like. And if I'm looking at the right thing, I believe I am. But I mean, Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's, it doesn't look like my flavor. I'm, I'm kind of tired of the fantasy genre in general, but this looks more like like an, a Lords of the Realm with card game kind of thing. And I mean, I'd, I'd try it for a few minutes, but I don't think this is something I get hooked on, fortunately. Let me ask you a question, uh, and that's where we get a, a little bit into the, the politics of these type of games. Do you think it's legit from them to put on the trailer uh, no pay to win? Uh, honestly, I think it's early to tell. <laughs> I mean, no, but I mean, like, to even advertise something like that, that my game is not a pay-to-win game. Um, I feel oh, like yeah, it's I a think. direct attack at Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, and I don't know if that's yeah. very much established that these games are pay-to-win. Uh, I think that's still very much part of the debate. I think a little bit so. I mean, it, it worries me to see claims like that because, I mean, we have A titles like Payday 2 that just had this gigantic microtransaction debacle after promising no microtransactions, no pay to win, none of that stuff. So, I mean, for a smaller studio like this to make that claim, I don't know where the monetization is coming. People need to get paid. So, I have a feeling we'll see a flip flop on that, but that's. Pure uh, so, you actually, you actually don't even believe that that's possible to come out with a free to play and not make it a pay to win, especially for a small studio. So, you, you won't even buy into that claim. When they start running out of money, that's when uh, people see dollar signs. I mean, look, Payday 2 had the same situation happen. So, that's what I worry I about. Thing. So, it's a big issue. In my opinion, I, I wouldn't believe the claim until I saw it actually functioning as a business model. Caitlin, remain proper. The microphone is yours. I actually was attracted by that statement because while I don't necessarily like the genre that they're advertising to me, I love it when a developer tells me that it is not pay to win. One of my favorite, I think, smaller um, MMOs, it was called Firefall. What they did was all aesthetic things, all beautiful things that you could put on your character were paid. Um, you could pay for things to be faster, but really it was just a convenience and not something you had to do. Whereas you have other games where you have to buy things in order to win and it I, sucks. I completely agree with Caitlin. And I would go as far as making this a conversation be about Hearthstone and how the entire Hearthstone model brought so much money to Blizzard. At the same time that World of Warcraft was really like going downhill and bringing less and less, that they they completely perverted the, the company's philosophy. And suddenly it's not just Hearthstone that's always asking you to spend money to win. It's every single game out there is completely bent on making money. And Blizzard feels to me like it's lost a lot of its soul because it feels so hungry for money. Um and so I, I'm kind of, um, I'm on the same side as you are. I, I can appreciate just, I don't know if I'd go as far as actually releasing a trailer that says this is not a pay to win, uh, because it's it maybe a little bit, maybe a cheap formula into getting you to play the game. I would say it's kind of tacky on the side, but I would definitely feel like there's a, de a big problem with pay to win and how uh, the free to play model is moving forward and kind of overtaking the industry and at the same time changing the way big studios approach uh, game development as a whole. So I'll, I'll back you up half the way, Chris. 
Oh uh, yeah, I, I so I can kind of see the two angles. I mean, I the the payday two thing is a great example of you know somebody saying, oh, we're going to be free, and then they're not free, and I think that's just so that's like the whole issue with a lot of independent studios raising money on Kickstarter, making big promises they don't you know fall through with. It was unfortunate to see the payday thing happen at a triple A level. Um, I think there's also like kind of a miscomparison maybe happening because trading card games, part of what you do is buy the cards. And so I think that's inherent in the model. And anyone who's playing a trade trading card game is probably like, okay, like this is what you do. And so a free to play trading card game, while it's an interesting idea, weirdly part of the compelling piece, at least for me, because I played Magic the Gathering online, I didn't play Hearthstone, was that, yeah, which is way better, uh, I, is that you actually open packs of cards and there's random cards inside and yes you can go into an auction house and spend hundreds of dollars getting the best cards but at that point you can pay to win but you have to pay so much money to win that it's almost not going to be accessible to anybody <clears throat> and so i got i'd like i don't know it's tricky because yeah on the one side you want to have a balanced game on the other side in in a, in a card game you're going to have to pay to play you know, I, I feel like I feel like that's a preconceived notion that's yeah in a way you're right it's established in the genre but at the same time it's, it's, it's kind of like a lottery you it's, know? yeah it's but it's fun. It's not necessarily the way to go for these types of games. I could very much, I, I believe you could have a much healthier model if the, if the, because the problem with Hearthstone is no matter how often you win, sure, you win more cards, the more you win, but the, the, the bigger your battle or the bigger your challenger really doesn't impact the, the quality of the cards you're going to get. And I don't know how it works in Magic. Well, because it's a bit, it's, it's about a rarity thing, right? Some cards are rare, some cards are not. It's, it's, it's kind of the collector's mentality. That's why it's part of game, card of, part of, a collection it's it's not quite fully a game but I, I, I feel like it should i feel like the healthier model is really to climb the ladder and the more you climb the ladder just like any other games you know the more you evolve in world of warcraft the closer you get to epic loot it should be the same thing in games in, in card games like the bigger the battle in, in these games though and the better you are the better, bigger prizes you win i mean that's the idea is that you could i mean tournaments happen in magic the gathering online like twice an hour and or more i mean probably hundreds of times an hour i'm not even sure they're happening constantly and you can take part in these tournaments, and if you're good and you're skilled, you you can win prizes. And sometimes, yeah, you play a guy who just like bought a thousand dollars worth of cards, and you can't beat him. But that's and, not that common. Yeah, but even then, like even if I'm the one who's spending a thousand a thousand dollars on cards, and I often enjoy wasting money on video games. When I play card games, I feel like I'm buying an iPad. Uh, that's I, fair. I, I, I really do. I feel like. I feel like, like I'm buying an iPad, like, okay, these, these cards are going to kick butts for at least six months. And then yeah. in six months, they're not going to be worth anything on the market. Right. And everybody's going to sure. look at me and say, you still have those cards? And I, so it's kind of, that's like the iPad, honestly. Like you spend, you drop 700 bucks on any Apple products and seven months later, you're completely outdated, out of fashion, and you might as well go back to eating meat. Um, no, you're, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Ah! Just like having <laughs> part, part of it is, is like having a bit of an addiction to opening booster packs. Like, that is absolutely part of it. Like, like I remember being five years old, or not five years old, like ten years old, opening booster packs, and there's, like, some kind of gleeful ridiculousness about wasting money on paper that might be worth more money than the other paper you wasted money on that makes you want to do it more. And uh, I can't really explain it. It's not exactly a logical process. So I'll it's sort of sit that. <laughs> the, the other big question I have on card games, and I'm fascinated about that, because Blizzard... And I hate to make it all about Blizzard, but I mean, they're kind of the company right now that really owns the card games market. Uh, you might argue, no, it's Magic. But my, Magic now is really like kind of a niche of hardcore gamers, especially the games online. Yeah, Chris. And we all played them when we were kids. But today, the guys who play Magic on, on computers, they're not, you know, your mainstream well, you know audience. Have, so wait, hold on. My point is... I, a but, when you're done. But yeah, <laughs> my question is... Can can Blizzard and and Hearthstone really hope to keep um, to keep the game mainstream because they're con continuously re releasing those packs and I feel like the more packs you release and this game or any game it's, I I'm not making it a Blizzard thing I just feel like it's kind of the the curse of this genre is you're gonna keep releasing packs to make your game interactive and to keep make m making money and at the end of the day you're gonna lose most of the mainstream audience because at some point we're all gonna get overwhelmed and only only a few you know hardcore card gamers are gonna keep at it so I, don't, I really don't see even Hearthstone who's a huge success uh, keeping with the momentum and just the huge success is being hats off on them for getting that but I, I feel like at the same time there's that it doesn't have the lifespan that World of Warcraft had and I don't think any card games do uh, 
Caitlin, event Chris. In answer to your question about, I, I suppose Blizzard, but in card games in general, Hearthstone actually has, from what I've seen, I haven't played it, a decent model. My boyfriend has never put a dime into it, and he's actually gotten to a very high rank. He just plays with what he has, and the better you get, again, the better packs you can open, and you can what do you, you can uh, cannibalize your cards and turn them into different cards. Uh, it's very interesting, and I personally, my game that I play every night is Heroes of the Storm. You don't have to put a dime into that unless you want special pretty things. Yeah, I'm all for cosmetics only. Chris? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I uh, I think that uh, makes me more interested in, in Hearthstone and uh, Heroes of the Storm to hear that kind of thing. Um, part of what I think makes Magic great is that it's one of the few games that feels like a video game, but you can play it with cards. And so you don't actually have to look at a screen. And there are all these little shops near my, uh, not like near my apartment, but probably within... 10 miles of my house, I can go to three different places and any given night I can be in a magic tournament for $15. And I think that's one of the cool things. Yeah. Is that I, it's like, it's like playing a video game, but like with people, it's the weirdest experience. Um, <laughs> um, I, th- I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, but that's very unique to magic. So I can't really, and I've never played the other card games online. I've only played magic, the gathering online, which is very much an extension of my love for the paper cards. So I might be different in that regard. Yeah, and an interesting, uh, an interesting comment from somebody in chat, uh, Vanity Tone. I hope I said that correctly, Vanity Tone. Guys who played poker, most of them would move to Hearthstone if the tournaments in HS in Hearthstone paid more. Uh, that's the only thing stopping them. If right, if right, if right. Yes, I completely agree. Uh, very, very well said. And I think like the more uh, the esports exactly. industry evolves, the more uh, video games are very much going to steal the market, and especially card games. Huge space there for the future. So you're absolutely right. Uh, I think. Uh, at the end of the day the, these these games have tons of potential and that's why people keep making them uh, let's move on before we move on to the actual let's go ahead Alucard. key giveaway yes I was about First, to say yes excellent before we move on to the games that are actually being uh, released this week, and it's not uh, it's not some crazy stuff, we're gonna we're gonna give a pretty decent, cool game. Actually, I think it's a point and click. I don't know if everybody's played the Book of Unwritten Tales series. Peter, have you played that? No, no experience in it whatsoever. Nope. I'm surprised. I thought um, maybe I'm being full of prejudice right here. <laughs> if I my experience with Final Fantasy is my life as king on the Wii, and if anyone knows about that, it is terrible, and really should just be burned if you own a copy. Unfortunately, it's all downloadable. There's nothing to burn. All right. Well, so for the key, for the key, okay. So wow. So for burn the, your Wii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, burn the Wii. So for the key game, the key giveaway. Please uh, plug in a number between one and hundred. Stick till the end of the show, and I promise you, we won't keep it for too long. We'll be passing on uh, the game keys towards the end of the show. But plug in a number between one and hundred. And I have a number in my head. The person who is the closest to the number, I promise I won't cheat, won't be, uh, will be getting the book of unwritten tales number two, which has a nice little value too. It's still a popular game. I think it came out just last year. So rolling the dice, rolling the dice. And uh, I'm going to keep going now because everybody is voting. I'm almost tempted to vote myself, quite frankly, because I, f- I feel like it's an ethical vote. I feel like I should not be doing it. I feel like I should not be voting right now in the chat, especially because I know the number. So I, I feel like since I know the number, it's very unethical. Thanks for voting. And I'm going to obviously just do that on Twitch. So I'm going to wait a couple of minutes. We're going to present the next game. And then I will be announcing the winner. Pick a game from 1 and 100 to uh, enter a chance to win book of the unwritten tales number two. We are moving on to the game this week. Uh, everybody press play. And it's a game that I'm sure Chris Kellogg has tons and tons to say about. It is Final Fantasy VI. Peter, right over at you. Final Fantasy VI debuted in 1994 as a sixth installment in the iconic Final Fantasy series. Imagine that. It's in that series and that's its name. Innovations included the ability to play all main characters as the game's protagonist. And to this day, its epic story intertwining each of their fates is still highly rated and widely popular. Caitlin? Oh, the yeah. Square Enix Group boosts a valuable Ooh. portfolio. Square Ooh. Enix Group 
boasts a valuable portfolio of intellectual property, including Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, and Tomb Raider, together with other well-established products such as Deus Ex, Hitman, Kane and Lynch, Kingdom Hearts, Star Ocean, and Space Invaders. The Square Group continues to push the boundaries of creativity and innovation by providing high-quality entertainment content, services, and products. All right. Well, that's it for Final Fantasy VI. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to let Chris Kellogg talk. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Well, so as you know, it's, even uh, already had his hand up. He was ready to <laughs> go. Let's go. All right. I automatically get it. Get it. Uh, so as as always, it has 16 bit graphics, which automatically makes it good. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, of course, it's um, a Final Fantasy uh, game from the Super Nintendo era. Those games were phenomenal, all of them. Um, I I think Final Fantasy VI. I have to check this. Might have been what we got in the United States as Final Fantasy III. Um, is my correct? Caitlin saying yes, thumbs up on that. Good, good. Wow, I'm getting a lot of nuts. Okay, I know something. Um, so it's, uh, it's, I played five and I got to review five. I really enjoyed it. That was not reviewed, I mean, uh, not released in the, in the United States. You were a little bit critical while. about five, though. Uh, yeah, because honestly, it didn't quite have the, <laughs> it, you know, so sometimes I worry about the localization. And it's not so much that the game was bad, it's that I feel like they did a shitty port. And I felt like sometimes that was a little on the shittier side of uh, localization. I was not happy with the translations. I was not happy with some of the other things they did. And I, they didn't, um, I imagine this is the same with this current version, but they didn't actually bring any of the 16 bit graphics over. They re rendered them. Uh, and, and I found that to be at times really great and at times really terrible looking. Okay. So the, the visuals were kind of dodgy. Um, but I mean, the storyline still great. The battle system was, you know, I still, I love it. I mean, turn based battles never not fun. In a Final Fantasy context, I'm reviewing a Final Fantasy game right now, Final Fantasy 13 Lightning Returns, which is the third one in the Final Fantasy 13 series. And that has an active battle system, which is uh, almost an action based battle system, which is fun. Uh, but I really just love the turn based Square Enix experience. And so Final Fantasy 6 will take me back to that, which is why I want to play it, which is why I love playing it. And I think I've said enough on that. <laughs> no, I think I think it's I think it's all fair. Uh, you've been playing an awful lot of Final Fantasy lately. Well, I'll give you that. So uh, three Final yeah. Fantasy games. Uh, <laughs> Dan Wheeler, I saw you saying the chat port from mobile. Is that a bad thing? Uh, yes and no. I mean, the mechanics are all there. I mean, the game is sound for the most part, with you know some translation issues that have been fixed from the original releases. But the problem, as Chris mentioned, and I agree with everything he said. By the way, he's on point. <laughs> I don't even know what they were thinking when they had this terrible, terrible rendering of the actual character sprites. That's been my biggest gripe about all the ports that they've gone from SNES to mobile. They're just they're just trashly done. I could do better pixel art, and I don't think it's a good representation of the personalities the characters have. And that's my biggest gripe. They use RPG experience. Maker. <laughs> they didn't use RPG Maker, but <laughs> they do better. Yeah, than that. <laughs> they might have. Yeah, it it just it doesn't look clean. And and honestly, I've read this massive, massive like theorem on all these graphical updates they've done between the, the SNES and the mobile ports, which we're now getting on Steam. And it just it's there's a sloppy job based on all the little technical details I've read about. So yeah, I mean, I've, I'm probably passing on it just for the pure sake of it, the art was just not well done when it was brought up to date. And I was actually going to ask uh, somebody else's opinion outside of Caitlin, but Caitlin, you just reviewed a game from um, RPG Makers, and at the same time, you opened your review with the statement that you got fed up with kind of the traditional RPGs, actually just like fan Final Fantasy VI. So I'm very curious to kind of get your thoughts on, you know, the game you just reviewed in, in contrast to this one, like, how, what do you make of it all? Well, Final Fantasy VI is very near and dear to my heart because, you know, trips to grandmother's. Grandmother had a Super Nintendo. That's all she had. And that's what we played. Um, and Final Fantasy VI, labeled number three, was the first RPG I ever played in my life of the turn-based style. So just the story was so much more expansive than anything I'd ever seen. The, I don't know, the crazy technology, the magic, it was an overload for me. And then I went on to see that over and over and over again, and it wasn't special anymore. Um, the one that I played before, it was an RPG Maker game, but it's interesting how the short version that the developer did for a contest was actually much better um, in some ways than the one that she actually published for sale. Um, and you never really know. You don't know with RPG Maker. And maybe actually this could 
have, like Dan Wheeler said, have been ported much better through RPG Maker. And uh, yeah, I think I think you I think I think you've said that well actually, uh, Peter. You who um, host the podcast called Return of the Retro. If that's not uh, Return of the Retro, I don't I don't know what is. Um, what's your thought on just Square Enix popping him out? Like, uh, I mean, there's, they're going at it. I have no problem with them trying to earn money on their old uh, stuff. If people are willing to pay for it, let them pump it out. And you fan, you a fan of these games? No, Final Fantasy doesn't do anything for me. I Why do not? like the original Dragon Quest that they make. JRPGs in general, I just don't like. I mean, Steven likes Final Fantasy IX, so no, nobody's perfect. <laughs> He's not even here to defend himself. I know, that's the best thing about it. You can't defend nine. It's okay, no. you can't defend nine. I used to be oh, sad. Oh, the hate out, Fred. Did it all. Up. Now I'm glad, because I don't have to be a part of these arguments. <laughs> It is funny though that uh, just I think just a couple weeks ago we introduced RPG Maker the new one and suddenly we're just on a roll and not obviously not Final Fantasy VI but I was I'm putting together those traders to prepare for the show there's a ton of RPGs coming out right now that look like they're straight out of RPG Maker so it's it's kind of funny to see and I don't know if I don't know how I feel about that that whole movement I don't know if I should support it or or bash it I'm still very much undecided. Don't hate the Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy doesn't hate you. No, I don't hate the Final Fantasy. I think Final Maker. Fantasy has <laughs> definitely. Uh, actually, you know, Chris, my problem with Final Fantasy is very much the problem I have with Nintendo. It's uh, it's the inability to innovate and and just keep the trend moving forward uh, and just constantly relying on rehashing the same stuff over and over again and catering to the very same small audience. And actually, Nintendo kind of came kept its audience because it's kids. Uh, Square Enix, I would argue, uh, lost its audience uh, to, to, to... Well, I mean, and, and I know people have their hands up, but I'm just going to say one thing quick. I, I think that uh, they took... They, they will admit themselves that they took a totally different direction, a different direction with Final Fantasy VII than they had done anything previous to that. And they've said it themselves. Then they took a new direction with X, and then they, were, they supposedly took another direction with, with uh, 13. Uh, I'd say there was a lot of difference between 7 and 10, uh, but there's a lot less difference between 10 and 13, without question. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, to that token, I kind of agree. It's, it will always be the most beautiful over explanate like over explanative game ever, though. <laughs> ben? Uh, I was going to say that, um, I mean, to me, like Square Enix, I've, I've been following them since they were two separate companies way back in the day when they actually both made golden games, in my opinion. But I feel like once they, they did. No, I say, don't disagree with that. I agree with you. They, <laughs> they did. Yeah, so since they came together, I feel like the company itself is like, it's trying to go in too many directions. You're right, they don't necessarily fully innovate, but they do like little steps of innovation with each game, but they're all going in different directions. So, I mean, if Eggs got their games together, got their, their eggs in one basket per se, I really think they could actually push innovation and create something new, something that we're all going to enjoy rather than this schism group we have within Final Fantasy lovers. So, yeah, that's, that's my piece. Yeah, so even a possible yeah. legacy to live up to, though. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, stupid Baka, thanks for joining us. Uh, here I got a stupid Twitch name, but makes sense for me. Makes perfect sense. Stupid. No, it doesn't make any sense. Stupid Baka. Uh, thanks for joining us. Please, every Tuesday night, nine thirty p.m. on Twitch. Uh, game giveaways as well. Come back. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> begging here AJ uh, I think I saw your hand ra get raised really quickly but not sure oh no I didn't have my hand raised okay alright then let's move on to the next game and the next game coming out this week is called Goblins and Grottos uh, Grottos I believe because there's two T's so it should be pronounced with the Italian accent uh, Goblin and Grottos genre 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 genre, genre. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Genre. Genre. Okay, Genre. okay, let's continue. <laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> a comic puzzle platformer with RPG elements, like every other game that comes out nowadays, and a powerful map and story editor with online sharing facilities. Play as a goblin trying to escape from a team of greedy adventurers, including a single-player campaign where you seek to avenge the death of your family killed by a level 100 paladin. Caitlin? Yeah. Sam Redfern, Sam Redfern is an indie game developer and university academic, making games since the 1980s. He's from Galway, Ireland. Uh, I'm not going to pass any judgment on this. Uh, actually, I'm going to ask Peter first to comment on this. It looked like it was a lot of fun. Um, I know you probably hate the graphics because you don't appreciate old school graphics. Because I'm shadowed like that. 
Well, if you are shallow like that, you think Nintendo's not innovating, but I would argue that they invented motion controls in the mainstream, and then they uh, adapted tablet gaming to the console. I agree. But that's me. All bad things. Moving <laughs> forward. You already know it's an auto-pass for Chris. No, it has 8-bit graphics. It could be tenuous at best. Oh, okay. No, this actually, Only the 16 uh, gets a pass. <laughs> it looks fun. You drop rocks on people's heads. How cool is that? I haven't done that since Dig Dug. I think I, for some reason, for some reason, it's endearing. I'll give you that much. It's endearing. There's some spike like, pits. Yeah. I haven't seen spike pits. In I'm, I'm actually going to pass it on to Lethargy. Lethargy, give me your comments on this. You know, this in a way is kind of my thing, but I got to tell you, I've seen so many of these lately. Um, I, see, I, see. I can't <laughs> tell you how many I have that I said, "Hmm, I'm going to play this eventually," and they still sit. Um. I think that at some point they need to switch it up a little because it's getting kind of old. Well, Black Pete seems to disagree with you in the chat. Black Pete is saying this is pretty pretty. Um, <laughs> people, some people like that. And, and the big question, I think, because uh, the big question is what is it in those games who kind of all look alike? Uh, what dissociates the, the, the success piece from the others? I mean, what does it take for a game to really succeed when they look like that? Uh, is it the game mechanics? Is it the... Does anybody have comments, uh, answers on that? Because I don't play those games, so I'm obviously completely out of the loop on these ones. But I'm always, as, as somebody who doesn't play those games, I'm always wondering that. Like, what does it take for a game like this to succeed, uh, AJ? I think a game like that for succeed is very much game mechanics. Um, I mean, with graphics like that, you can only do so much um, with certain aspects, but I think, like, uh, for example, what was that one game I played? Explosion Aid. Explosion Aid I reviewed earlier in the year, and that was a really yeah. fun game because um, of the ways you could kill people, and you had to get really creative sometimes with how you had to kill people. So I think if you take it the is. route more of a, it for these kinds of styles of games, instead of looking at it as an action game, I think if you look at it, as a problem-solving game, I think they're a lot more fun because if there's a certain way you have to kill enemies or you have to position a certain thing here or there, I think that kind of separates the um, the, the the good ones from the bad ones because uh, those are the parts that get frustrating, but those are the parts that keep you coming back for more. Like when you mess up, but you think you know what you did wrong, and you can come back and try to correct that. I mean, that's at least me anyway, but for... 8-bit side-scrollers or whatever, I think those are what separates the good ones from the bad ones. Yeah, and Black Beat actually says because it is easy to work with, which is, uh, I think it's an interesting comment, the, just the easiness to it all. Uh, Caitlin? I am such a Dungeons & Dragons fan, and Pathfinder and all of the tabletop RPGs. As a DM, the role reversal is really what draws me. I want to play as the Goblin. I mean, I even, there's a game, actually, a game module called uh, Cobalt's Ate My Baby, where you play as Cobalt's trying to steal a human baby. And um, it's it's funny because you play as these bumbling, tiny little things. And, like, in this one, playing as the Goblin, you're not the hero. You're not the knight in armor saving the day. You're just a goblin dropping rocks on people's head. How is that not attractive? You gotta think about it from the angle of the story, of the role reversal, even the name, Goblins and Grotos. That is such a play on D and D. Yeah, I, I, I okay. I, that, I think that's acceptable. Uh, by the way, I forgot to say you're supposed to. We're supposed to vote, guys. Type one if you think we should review this game. Type two if you think we should toss it out and move on. Peter. Um, if Caitlin likes the role reversal, she would love the book NPC, which is about uh, four people that work in a tavern. And uh, they deal with people who come in who uh, are murder hobos. Nice. That sounds lovely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Peter. Uh, quite inspiration. Get, I, I guess we're going to move on to the, to the next games. There's actually a lot of 8-bit AAA tonight. I feel like it's the end of the year, so there's final releases we're getting. The next game that we're uh, covering tonight is called Sinless. Sinless, everybody plays play, and Peter, right over at you. So Sinless has a quote here, before we knew it, what we once knew as freedom became nothing more but a faint and distant memory. 
Mm. Venture forth and discover the truth behind the seemingly perfect Omnicare Society and Sinless, a unique point-and-click and visual novel hybrid set in an original cyberpunk reality. Caitlin? From Poland designer Michael Newgarthen, programmer Grez Goraz Zuk, and lead programmer Paul Come on, get it right. Kowski, <laughs> <laughs> a talented and focused group of individuals set for world domination, developing and providing memorable experience along the way. I'm so sorry for butchering those names. Chris, you, they want to dominate the world. They're done. That's a, that's a, Chris, you think that, you think this is this this is point and click? Yeah, I, I thought that's what it said in the description. Was I misunderstanding? No, uh, I, I don't listen. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. not. I, yeah, it says a unique point-and-click and visual novel hybrid. So I was just confused because uh, I saw some avatars punching each other, and I was like, well, that doesn't seem like a point-and-click game unless you're clicking on an enemy to fight it, and then you've got Diablo, so I don't know. Um, I, I, uh, I, I, I guess it looks okay. I wouldn't, I hate point. Uh, yeah, this is, this is the game that Stylomax got mad at me for because it says, Fred, this is for Google Play. And so it's not yeah, technically looks... PC, which I kind of disagree. I mean, it's Google Play. You can play it on PC, correct? If it's Google Play. No. Well, technically. Android. Okay. Well, okay. All right. We messed up. <laughs> then. <laughs> Way, way, way too much bloom and artificial lens flare. My eyes hurt from watching that trailer. It's still, the, I, would, I would still argue. I mean, it's, yeah. It looks pretty, but I'm just yeah. it's really bright. That really hurt. <laughs> I feel, That's I just know, my opinion, anyway. I feel like sometimes artists are developing games when they should just do artwork. Agreed. Right? Like, we start to see a lot more of that. I think every year you see artists get into game development when really their strength is in uh, artwork because they shouldn't really touch too much. But it's too soon to say. Maybe it's a good game. Uh, the art reminds me of Remember Me. I don't know if you guys played that game. A little bit, yeah. But it, yeah. even Remember Me didn't hurt that bad. Yeah, <laughs> the glare was definitely low. <laughs> I love, you know, maybe I'm just a sucker for shiny objects, but I uh, I love the the sort of glow and the shimmer. I think that, that adds a little dynamic kind of flair to what is otherwise just a, a picture book. I agree with you. Uh, by the way, I completely agreed to announce, uh, I completely forgot to announce the winner of Book of the Unwritten, Unwritten Tales. And I am happy to uh, let you all know that Optimus, and I, I swear I'm not shitting here, Optimus Noob Gaming got the Book of Unwritten Tales too. And I'm glad he did because he's contributing quite a lot in the chat with some intelligent comments. So Optimus Noob Gaming, congratulations. You got the first key. Stick around because the, the second game we're giving away is Company of Heroes 2. That will be towards the end of the show. We will release the keys at the end of the show when I get the time to get into the account and whisper you the keys. Uh, handy not Company of Heroes 2, including its DLC. So stick around, guys. The show will will last probably another 20 to 30 minutes if we uh, don't get to uh, chatty. We're moving on into the next game, and the next game is quite a sight. I'm, uh, I'm really hoping for some uh, fruitful comments on this, and it is called Simple Planes. Simple Planes, right over at you, Peter. Everybody press play. Build airplanes by snapping parts together, designing wing sections, and attaching engines. At any time, you can strap yourself into the cockpit and see how it flies with re realistic physics. If you're not in the mood for building, over 100,000 <laughs> airplanes are available to download for free. Caitlin? All right. This is developed by Jundru, an LLC based in Glen Carbon, Illinois. You said the S. Sorry. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, yeah, Chris. So this is totally like Kerbal Space Program, but with planes, from what I can tell. I don't know if anyone, if any of you guys got to play Kerbal Space Program. So it's um, space engineers with planes. Yeah, yeah, yes, precisely. <laughs> um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, I'm seeing like jet powered, like, you know, vertical takeoff and landing planes doing barrel rolls. I mean, I would love to do this. Um, one thing that kind of annoyed me about Kerbal Space Program is you, I felt like you, while you had control over your spaceship, you couldn't, like, do a lot with it. Like, you really couldn't, like, have... You couldn't take it for a fun ride. And it looks like maybe with this one, you might be able to actually simulate flying quite a bit with your uh, creation. So, yeah. I would like this game. I think it'd be fun. It kind of reminds me of Legos, but with planes. Anyone else? I was playing yeah. the next trailer. Though. Hey, raise your hand, Alucard. Just <laughs> oh, raise I'm, your hand. Oh, I'm Come sorry. on, man. Like, 
they do. I'm, I'm, I'm on his profile picture just to hang out. <laughs> yeah. You got a gun to us now. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Adukar, and then you, Sergi. Oh, no, no, you can, you can go first, the Sergi. Oh, gee, yeah, I'm the one in the middle, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> I can't tell you how many Kerbals I've killed. It's probably, you know, I I in. Your microphone. Find a game I suck at. But um, at the same time, this does look like a lot of fun. Um, with Kerbal, you went up in the air. Did you leave orbit? That was it. This is more Your of a... Your microphone, Kitten. This one looks a lot more fun. It's like oh. an adult version. So you like this? Yeah, I would totally play this. Yeah. Oh, you guys are like, this is a popular thing. One thing that's... It's all because of Kerbal, just like uh, April said, or Luther just said. Um, it's it, Kerbal made this into like a genre kind of a genre. The, the sure. building of contraptions exactly. and then testing them 3D. Who knows why it's fun, but it is. C'est bien. Oh, man. Hey, Jay. Uh, no, I kind of agree with what everyone was saying. Um, these games are frustrating in the best kind of way. Um, and I, I usually prefer shooters, but this is one of the few genres of games where I actually do enjoy myself besides shooters. Um, just because it's frustrating, one little thing you can do differently, and it could mean the difference of crashing 20 feet after takeoff or uh, having a successful flight. And uh, I have seen people play Kerbal Space Program, and it looks very similar to like that. But um, as Chris was saying earlier, that um, it looks like you have the ability to at least take your planes for a little bit of a ride, whereas uh, in Space Program, once you got into space, that was it. Like, you were done. So I think this game might be a little more rewarding than that. So, I mean, this looks fun. Yeah, and I would definitely like uh, to have someone with a little bit of experience in, in this type of game review, review it on our website. And we'll, if, if somebody does, we'll keep you up to date because this is definitely a peculiar beast and one to focus on. So if we, if we actually get a reviewer to write about it, we'll remind me to make a note, a uh, self-note, mental note, and send it, uh, send you guys the link on the next show, which is every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. We move on to the very next game. Unless anybody has something else to say on that? I bet. I've been playing the the next trailer like over and over again because of the song. Okay, then uh, <laughs> no, I, I I think it's fair. Excited as well. The next game, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. The next game is called Taimu Mari. Taimu Mari. Uh, Peter, right over at you. An etro style platform game because that's what our notes say, not retro. In keeping with the best traditions of games of our childhood. Take control of Himari, a young female wizard traveling across various ages to settle the balance in time across the whole world. Now, if this was really in balance with our childhood, we wouldn't know she was a woman until the end of the game, a la Metroid. Anyway, Caitlin? All right. It's developed by Turnox, which appears to be an American company, but I wasn't able to find a lot of information, so I'm not sure. (laughs) Can you tell me what... can (laughs) Can you guys tell me what that was, Chris? Hey, Jay. Were you not listening to the music? I mean, are you not listening? It's awesome. Yeah, it's so improving. Yeah, so, so, uh, chiptunes, man, is, like, a great thing. I love chiptunes. And, uh, and this is, like, classic chiptunes. They are killing it right now with this soundtrack. And, uh, honestly, I am the kind of person that would totally play a game just to listen to its music. And this just looks like it's fun enough to, to suspend my... Uh, like, you know, just to keep my hands busy while all I really want to do is just the soundtrack. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this without question. Yeah, it's, it's a very, it's, it's, I don't know, it's interesting. Um, looks, uh, yeah, I, I don't Please keep in mind other games we have reviewed. Did you forget about, uh, what was it? Uh, fish fetuses coming out of the, the, the alien there? What? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh you weren't yeah. there for that. Like, three I weeks ago, that. were we? Can you shed some light on that, Edukar? Because I'm totally lost here. I don't remember last year. what, what godforsaken game that was, but it was not fun. It was some like what was it? JRPG was it? It was, it was Ander- one of the. It was another Ander- anime. Kawase, I believe. It, it that that part was dark, man. <laughs> All right, then I guess uh, Taimu Marie gets a uh, gets a thumbs up. Uh, please yeah, vote. This looks fine. 
Please vote in the channel if you haven't done so already. Type 1 if you think we should review it. Type 2 if you think we should toss it. And the very next game we'll be covering tonight, I, a name I personally like. I don't know about the game itself, but it is called Goodnight Butcher. Oh, that's me. Goodnight that's Butcher is an arcade-style horror game with an isolated, heart-pounding atmosphere which shifts seamlessly between running your butchery and running for your life. Caitlin? All right. It is developed by Perfect Square Studios, and they are a simulation and video game development company in North Carolina. I really like the music on this one. Um, anybody? I, I have nothing to say on this, except uh, for me, I'm not excited at all. <laughs> uh, AJ. Well, I mean, I'm... Can't tell if we're actually seeing the proper gameplay, but the fact that it's kind of like the heartbeat going in and out is really annoying me. Uh, that kind of yeah. bothers me. I know what they're trying to do, and it's making it a little bit more suspenseful, which it conveys that point really well. It's just that's really bothersome. But I mean, besides that, it looks all right. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay between the time we speak and the actual trader, and that's just Dynamax. Uh, that's his fault. Uh, just, okay. When in doubt, just blame Dynamax. Okay, so I, I think we will move on, guys. It's, we're not that interested. The the next game, though, the next game I think bears a much bigger conversation, uh, which is a conversation about this type of games as a whole, which I think is is kind of a new trend. And my argument would be that this is not really the games that are appealing. Your you're a microphone, Caitlin. These are not the games that are appealing to the, the expected gamers, for lack of a better word, just the gamers that we are, that we have come to be over the past 20 years, but a whole new generation of gamers, in my opinion, is something to be debated. But it is called, it is called Aviary Attorney. Aviary Attorney. Um, press play, everybody. Let's go. The hottest bird lawyering game to come out of the 1840s France. Join J.J. Falcon and his witty apprentice, Sparrow Son, as the two take on clients, interview witnesses, collect evidence, and deliver justice to the guilty. Um, what? What? Thank you. <laughs> Caitlin? <laughs> Jeremy has experience with designing mobile, online, and desktop games. He has designed games for both casual and core gamers and has produced applications within the field of serious games. This is cool. In my opinion, this is very, very cool. Um, I, I, obviously not appealing to the masses, but this is the type of stuff that um, I, I, I feel like is going to bring you a whole new type of... Um, of people into into the gaming pool. Uh, if we if we see a lot more of this as, as stuff goes on, and for some reason, and I I, I was trying to I forget who I was talking. I, I was talking to Stephen about this. Uh, it's the, it's the type of stuff that we're starting to see more and more, and I can't really pinpoint um, the type of people in mainstream, so not mainstream, but ju just society as a whole, who get into this stuff. I don't know if it's storytellers or just avid book readers or I don't know, the, the artistic people too, the people who go and see um, exhibits, uh, but it's bringing something to the gaming scene that we kind of haven't seen, and I kind of want to encourage this type of initiative. I'm going to start with Peter. Two words. Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Is it, we've seen this before. It's been all over 3DS and DS. It's, it's just done with a new style. It actually is really very pretty, very well drawn, but it's Phoenix Wright for the PC. Okay, um, and so what does it mean? Phoenix Wright was an attorney game that you collected evidence, so you sat in trials, and you tried to figure out, um, usually through terrible deductive reasoning, uh, who was actually guilty and who was telling the truth. Okay, uh, but you think the, the actual um, mechanics of the game, just the style of the game, is really what's at heart here? Because I feel like it's really like something for the artsy people. Chris? Well, I think actually it's funny, like, I think you were kind of hinting at it before, and you're like, is it like the people that go to exhibits? Are they the kind of people? <laughs> you know, those people. Uh, exhibit. I'm sorry, that sounds stupid. No, 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 but actually I'm making fun of you, but I know I get what you're actually saying. It is kind of intended to be for the kind of person who would generally not play any kind of action-based game. I mean, they wouldn't even be able to handle the speed of civilization. You know what I mean? It would just yeah. be too fast for them. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> and they're exactly. too complicated. <laughs> And, but they're still smart, and they still want to be engaged. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not passing and, judgment on, on the country. I think it's great. I, I, yeah, I yeah. And, and what everyone said was right, too. I mean, there is kind of this weird uh, lawyer 
Jean that seems to be appearing uh, that existed with Phoenix Wright. And I know there's one or two other games that have hinted at it. And I do know that with television, like a, a, a law-based television show is a, is a genre all in itself. And I guess what we're kind of seeing is this weird like lawyer outgrowth in gaming, too, that is kind of the allegory that I at least see in television. Uh, and there's probably one exists in, liter- in literature as well and in movies, but particularly I can see that comparison. People people like the law, and we live in these very litigious societies, so it's natural that we would make video games about litigation, even if that sounds like an oxymoron. Yeah, I, I think we should get the developers, if nobody reviews this, I think we should totally get the developers on the Twitch call and kind of get his perspective, because I have no doubt he will get on just to speak about it. do a tournament. Yeah. Oh, I think we should, I think, we, yeah, <laughs> if all right, <laughs> then we I'm gonna are. read all of the laws. Uh, well, this game takes place in Paris, so I'll have to catch up on my French law, but. <laughs> oh, that's okay, I've got you covered. <laughs> all right, excellent. I'll need you to translate all of French law. That's it. <laughs> There's a lot more of those people than you might think, Fred. I- I'm serious. Um, I mean, Phoenix Wright was huge. I mean, that was like, it was a genre buster for sure. It just brought something new to the DS, to, to most mobile gaming. I've literally played through the entire all of them, like, really? and then binge them. They're fantastic games. Uh. Um, the logic, yeah, it's not so sound a lot of times, but once you get into the gameplay where you're taking like, these clues together, and you're weaving these stories, you're trying to find um, false logic that's been presented in witness testimony. I mean, it's really interesting, and to see this adapted in a different manner, I'm totally on board. Uh, I got the same kind of feel from it that I did at Phoenix Wright, and that's a really good thing in my opinion. And I hope you get that. I know I'm very critical and sometimes I bash stuff without really being like, without having anything kidding. to, but I've, I've, I'm, I'm really backing this up. Like for me, this is, this is good for the industry. Uh, Lisergy. I really, really like the way the game looks. I did play Phoenix Rising as well. And aside from, there are obviously flawed logic a lot of times where you're just like, what? Um, I think that it was really fun, and I'm surprised that there haven't been a lot more of those, I want to say lately, but really not at all. Right. And I think the game really has a lot of promise. Thank you. And it blows my mind that people still don't know I'm French. I feel, I feel like I must, be, I must be making progress with the English language because I've been here for 15 years in this country, and every time I, all I have to do is say hello and say, oh, you're from France. <laughs> like, nearly. So I must be making, yes, I am French. I'm from Paris originally, but I've been in the States. Yeah, I need to get out. I'm just, I guess so. All right, the next game, the next game we'll be covering tonight is, and we're getting towards the end of the show. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be doing the giveaway shortly. The next game that we are setting ourselves up for is called Unsummoning, Unsummoning, I'm sorry, Unsummoning the Spectral Horde. Press play, Peter, right over at you. A nefarious necromancer summoned an army of vengeful spirits to wreak havoc <laughs> upon the world. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, he only wanted fears. to wreak havoc upon him. Now he must undo what he has done by drawing upon the power of magic sigils to bless the ghouls back to the netherworld. Caitlin? Caitlin, you're muted! Your mic! Your mic! One Roaming Ground Studio is a one-man game studio based in Austin, Texas. Yeehaw! And he, that's, 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 nice. that's all the description we're going to get. He looks polished. Um... I, I I think that's um I don't know. I don't know. I'm 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 debating in my head right now. Like, uh, is, is it is a board game? game? Is it? It's kind game? of it's kind of a matching game with monsters. Is it like Bajong? <laughs> oh, I see. They're making shapes kind of. I see. It almost like bejeweled, but yeah, with monsters. Bejeweled with monsters. Yeah. Kind, kind of. No, no. Go ahead, Caitlin. It kind of looks like, you're right, like the tile matching and the, the things that really old people like to play on Facebook uh, <laughs> meets Pac-Man meets something else. But it looks interesting. I love uh, I love Dirty Plunger's uh, comment. Love Austin, but it's far from yeehaw. <laughs> 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 this is just genius. <laughs> Anyone else on this one? I think my description is better than the game. Uh, Lethargy. <laughs> I cannot remember the name of the game, but I want to say it was One Million. I think you guys reviewed it at some point. Um, it was a tile matching game, and it was also a dungeon, I want to say, runner. It wasn't much of a crawl. But um, the 
monsters that you killed and so forth were dictated by what you matched in the game. Um, this reminds me a lot of that. And if I recall, I played that game for 11 hours straight until I beat it. Because I would not be undone by a bejeweled lookalike. <laughs> I can really, I, I would totally play this. Yeah. Okay, well, I would. The addiction, the addiction. <laughs> Anytime I look at a game and think, hmm, this is going to be easy, it better be easy or I will not breathe until I'm done. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay, if uh, anybody has anything to say on before we review the last game and we do the giveaway, anybody else on this one? And then we've got one final trailer. I guess not. Well, before we get to the very last trailer, I am going to uh, think of a name in my head. Okay, I have the I have the number in my head, and I'm gonna ask. <laughs> it took a while. I gotta pick a good one. Uh, and everybody, please in the chat, throw a number between one and a hundred to compete. Uh, to compete for a chance to win Company of Heroes two and its DLC. A number between one and a hundred. I have one specific in my head, and if you can think of the correct number, the, at least the number that's closest to the correct number, you will get the key. Uh, the keys will be announced at the end of the show. We will close the show and stay in the chat in the chat because we will be sending you the keys right after. You just have to give me a couple seconds and I promise you next week we'll have a better system where the keys are just rolling through. We're still working on that, so bear with us. We're still a new community, especially on Twitch. And the very latest game, the last game that we'll be covering tonight is called... I think that's another RPG maker, correct me if I'm wrong. He's called the man, I like the name though, the madness of Little Emma. Peter. I don't think it's RPG maker, but the madness of Little Emma, Little Emma, I keep saying an L in there. Little Emma is an action platformer with roguelike elements, including permadeath, levels assembled procedurally, and handcrafted rooms, and tons of varied items and enemies. Help Emma find her brother who has disappeared in eerie circumstances, maybe even in eerie Indiana. Caitlin? All right. The developer is mysterious, but their account is listed on every site that I could find as Huge Owl. That is mysterious. Did you guys see E.G. Daniel's comment? I hate to stop you, but did you see E.G. <laughs> 74. Chris? Uh... Yeah, I uh, this game kind of looks like Mega Man a little bit. I'm getting a bit of a Mega Man vibe, maybe a little bit also of a, um, you know, just a general shoot 'em up vibe. But mostly, I, I it, it looks like it could be really cool, and the action looks super fluid. And I really enjoy um, the different enemies I'm seeing. It kind of like just has this really interesting take on uh, on sort of a side scrolling shooter. And um, I agree, kind of like Metal Slug, maybe. Um, looks good. And yeah, I just I think it looks like it could be a lot of fun, much. Has, I mean, it's one of those games where you really won't know until you start to play it, uh, because as long as the level design has to be good in order to make sure you're going to stay interested. But if they've got solid level design, I like the enemies, I like what I'm seeing with the fluid action, this is probably a really fun and challenging game. Peter, you want to add to that? And then I get to you then? I can't add much to that. That was exactly how I feel about it. It looks awesome. All right, then? I'm seeing a lot of uh, Binding of Isaac meets more of a bullet hell type game. Um, I mean, there's a whole list of games in this chapter genre you can throw into, like, Clown Mulana, Cave Story. But it's more Metroidvania, I'd say, than this. It seems more, like, stage-based and procedurally based, but it looks fantastic. I mean, Binding of Isaac has a huge following. Uh, the same creepy vibes, um, the same kind of weird items, weird dark story. I mean, I, th I think this is going to be a pretty big hit if it's uh, manipulated correctly and released properly. All right, please, yeah, Chris, please give me some more while I repeat the keys. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to say, just to add on, it's uh, it's kind of refreshing to see this kind of art style on this genre. Like, it, you don't usually see... Uh, it's almost an artsy <laughs> style. I mean, it's about a little right. girl who is wielding some kind of unknown snowball cannon I'm going to go with. I don't know what I'm looking at, but um, it's, it's it's cool. It looks like she's fighting her nightmares, maybe. Um, right. It's interesting, because usually these shoot-em-ups are real cut and dry. It's like Metal Slug is like, you are a soldier, and there are a lot of enemy soldiers, and you blow up the enemy soldiers, and that's all. And, uh, you know, Metroid, I'd say, has got a deeper storyline, but, you know, they're, they're, Mega Man really doesn't have much of a storyline. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that this has at least somewhat of a storyline, because uh, uh, it's got amazing style going for it. Yeah, well, congratulations. Uh, go ahead, Dan. 
Oh, it actually reminds me a lot of Axiom Verge, which is another kind of Metroidvania game that came out recently, but just with a lot more going on and a completely different setting. But yeah, check out Axiom Verge if you like the style. It's a super solid game. Hey, Jay, any th- last thoughts on this? Um, I mean, it looks pretty cool. Um, it could be a really depressing storyline they make. Maybe she's schizophrenic or something. <laughs> That's why it's called The Madness of Emma. Um, no, it, was, it looked pretty good. I mean... The fact that she's so quick, I think, would make this game a little more difficult because, especially with games like that, um, especially like with like hit zones, with uh, it's just, uh, regards to like uh, missiles and projectiles, and factored in with the fact that she's moving so fast, I can see that being challenging in some parts of the game. Okay, and I'm gonna close on Alucard, Caitlin, and then Lisergy, and then we'll close the show. Yeah, this this actually does look fun. It actually looks like I'm going to have to buy a lot of posters if I play this because I'm going to punch a lot of holes in my walls, but I'll definitely play it. Toothpaste. You got to get toothpaste. In. <laughs> and Caitlin? At first, to me, it looks like something that would be a platformer or a hard bullet hell, something I wouldn't play. But the art, the, the weird eyeballs and the creepy little stuff floating everywhere, it's cool. It's pretty cool. And finally, last but certainly not least, uh, Lethargy. You know, the eyeballs, it looks to me like a brain with eyeballs. A lot of these uh, little enemies, they remind me so much of Terraria enemies. Of what? Terraria enemies. Terraria. Yeah, you know, like the wall of flesh and stuff like that. They really look very similar. It's true. Actually, now that you mentioned it, I was having a hard time... Putting my finger on the art style and Terraria is totally what it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. I actually know now what you're referring to. I think I. It's like I, a side scrolling Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I guess so. Uh, congratulations to Black Pete who won the very last giveaways company of heroes. Black Pete, I'm Durian. not black. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not you, my friend. <laughs> Unfor- unfortunately, it is not Peter. It is Black Pete, and Black Pete got Company of Heroes 2 plus a couple DNC. So thank you for joining us, Black Pete. We definitely appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, guys, thank you very much for joining the show tonight. Uh, we're not going to have a show next week because no games are coming out, and we wish you all a very, very happy holiday, a Merry Christmas if you're celebrating, but definitely a Happy New Year. And I also wanted to take a minute before we stop to introduce our second show which is our second show to date it's going to be on twitch it's going to be on itunes it's going to be on youtube and um it kind of has to come with a, a little bit of um introduction to it we've been uh over the time if you don't know our website it's opinions.com and we've been up for about a year and three months now and we've many people think of us as an indie gaming website for pc uh, we're not we're actually about anything that's about PC, and a lot of us uh, do enjoy getting completely addicted to AAA games, ranging from uh, this year, especially for myself, at least it was... Actually, let's ask that question. Uh, who here this year has played AAA games? Me. And biggest addictions this year, Chris? Uh, usually Shadow of Order. I can't come out in 2014, and I'm still playing it, and because I'm, I'm convinced I can get to 100%, and I will. It's still a game that I really want to check out, and I have it. We have it, uh, Steam Libraries. And if you want to join us, we're opinoobs.com. Simply send an email to Chris at opinoobs or Fred at opinoobs. We'll be happy to bring you on board. We get on TeamSpeak. We have Steam Libraries, a bunch of games. We do reviews, interviews, and all that good stuff. And we're community-oriented, community-built, so we're very welcoming as a whole. Uh, Shadow of Mordor, we have on our Steam accounts, Chris. And it's a game that I've been trying to play myself as well. And I feel like it's a game, even though it's very action, base that I could get into just because it, it, I don't know there's something spicy it's, about it it's the perfect merger for someone like you who really like if you like the Witcher it is definitely the next step into action RPGs from the Witcher yes and yeah. I love the I love the combat in Witcher I think it's yeah. increased I don't combat's get it I love more it more fluid and more kinetic you'll love it for sure. and if you Mordor. like that it's a knock or it's a hop skip and jump away from Assassin's Creed hmm. and I, you know what Peter for all of for all of the crap I've talked about it. Assassin's Creed this year. I'm actually very curious to check out Syndicate because it looks absolutely gorgeous. I've, I've owned Syndicate for four days. I still haven't played it yet. 
Yeah, Fred, uh, Fred, whenever you say you hate a game, we don't listen. We yeah, wait till you play it, and then month, six then, months later... <laughs> in my own defense, and this goes back to the show that we're doing Sunday, I never said I hated Fallout. Yes, oh, right. no, yeah, wait, said, so if no, I make a no. compilation of, the, of past videos where you... Yes. Crap on Fallout, you won't be surprised. I said, uh, I said, and I still stand by it. Fallout looks absolutely awful, and Fallout looks absolutely awful by today's standards. It is still my game of the year. In any case, Ben, what's your AAA? I was gonna say, Fred, you slammed that game directly to me. <laughs> you definitely there. said you hated it. We were all there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> honestly, this. Uh, that's you know, it's all on YouTube, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> do that, and I'm gonna ask right, you find right. that time where I said I hated Fallout. All right, fair enough. Um, honestly, a game I spent the most time on, I'd say, probably Realm Reborn, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I, okay. I think I played that beta one, two, three before it was re-released, after it was re-released for about a year and a half. I just got out of the addiction a couple. Were you a fan? Have you played World of Warcraft at all? I played it. If you name an MMO in the market, I played it. Don't do it. Oh, wow. Are you serious? Order City I played Online. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on the genre as a whole nowadays? Genre. And, uh, it, it desperately needs innovation. It, it de- it's, ever since WoW came out, we have carbon copy clones left, right, up, down, no matter where you look. Um, that's the cash cow, and everybody needs to have cash to keep producing games and pay their pockets, uh, all that good stuff. So yeah. we've really been suffering from innovation problems for a long, long time. It's kind of sad. Like uh, You can kind of throw MMOs, which showed so much potential early in the 2000s, into the same bag as RTS. And these are two, two great genres that mm-hmm, died because... Uh, well, because we couldn't, you know, like you say, innovate. And I, I feel like that's really you know, sad. Just a, I'll say just a quick thing, not to interrupt, but I think um, the birth of virtual reality in the next year is going to take MMOs and put it on its head. Because as I think about it now, most of the barrier, I think, to innovation with MMOs is more to do with the technology than probably with innovation. Because we can create amazing worlds with all kinds of single-player experiences. And somehow it's still not enough for us as gamers with MMOs. Yep. I think uh, I think virtual reality might break through that third wall, as they say. That That's interesting. Us. I agree. Yeah, I think because what we want is to truly be taken to another world. We're not so worried about what we do once we get there, actually. We really sure. just want to be there. And so people rushed to be there, and then they got bored. Not the yep. other way around. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I think it's a technological barrier more than anything else. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. Next year might be the, the, the year when the innovation comes. That's a and good, maybe yeah. the Cubs will win the World Series, too. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, hey, AJ, hey, you, pr- you play AAA? Um, I haven't had so much time to have addictions this year, but I've been playing a lot of Rocket League lately, so I can't stop playing it. <laughs> but that's not really AAA. It's Is in it the not? It's, it's not middle. AAA. That's that's a, it that's was a very. MLGs. It's it's it, not yeah, but that's it, I think it, it's it, not fair to call it AAA because because then if we call it AAA, we're basically we we're basically <laughs> taking away all support to the indie scene because we're basically saying that oh. the moment the indie studio succeeds, it becomes AAA. Well, they, but that's not their first game, um, and this is their first game to truly break through. I think their next game will make or break them as a AAA. Developer, they can because they reached a level of fame that is so large it might as well be considered it's mainstream. True. It's true. And and if they can replicate that, they're absolutely triple A. And if they uh, sign the Warner Brothers, then consider it triple A without question. <laughs> and Peter, triple A, not modern ones. I don't have any new well, equipment. Retro triple A. Yeah, he plays on the Xbox, uh, guys. I have to. You try hey. playing on a processor that was made in two thousand eight. Hmm. Alucard, Triple A of the Year. Mm, okay, so first off, AJ, the first step is admitting you have a problem. You're on the right path. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Next, next, Fred. Uh, before the show even started, all I I got on TeamSpeak, and the first thing I hear is, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! I just need 20 more minutes." Why? Because he's playing Fallout. Anyway, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I love it. It's a fantastic. Um, game. this past year, I got in the beginning. I got on late on GTA Five. Had a blast with that storyline wise. Uh, Arkham Knight was awesome storyline wise because I played it through. Um, Metal Gear. I am freaking over a hundred goddamn hours, and I'm not even fifty percent. <laughs> Is oh, it repetitive? Because really? I've seen a lot of comments on the, on the web about this game being overly repetitive. I am a notorious kidnapper in that game. That's what yes. I consider myself because I just run around and I steal people. 
I feel a little it's dirty at times. <laughs> um, yeah, other than, but uh, those were the biggest ones, and obviously The Witcher when it came out. Another, you know, one that uh, he who shall remain Fred. is Fred hated. Um, but yeah, I mean, Super. other than those, I haven't played yet. Other than that, it's just a lot of alphas, early access stuff. And then Caitlin. I uh, I actually haven't bought a lot of AAA games this year. Um, I don't know if the free to play Blizzard games even count, but I've really yeah, been playing. I've been like I said, Heroes of the Storm. I just bought a new hero today, um, and I really like them. I would count Tomb Raider as AAA and this oh, yeah. year, except it doesn't come out for PC until next year. Mm-hmm. And I will be buying it because Lara Croft has been my hero since I was five. Lara Croft is bae. She, yeah. I love her, and I have been waiting for this sequel for years. Sorry, and you played, did you play the, the reboot of the Tomb Raider? Did I catch I that? did. I've played every single one since I was a kid. Top notch. I loved uh, it. I, I loved the reboot. I thought it was awesome. I, I loved did. it, too. Yeah. It was great. It was a true it revival. Brought crop into the modern era, too. Oh, yeah. Top notch. And uh, April. Rain. Lethargy. Sweep a day. Oh, uh, your mic's still muted, I think. Ah, uh, microphone's muted, yeah. Still muted. You have all night. <laughs> We're ready to do. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yay. Uh-huh. Uh, well, now that you slammed it, I'm going to say <laughs> I don't <laughs> No, 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 go ahead. Don't listen to him. Not shit. Lies. He poops on Nintendo. How, and, uh, how good could he be? I Xbox as well. And I have a PlayStation 4. And uh, I have Stato, a can you please boot her? <laughs> <laughs> if there's a game system, I have it back from the original Atari. Um, I have an Atari sitting next to me. And um, I think that, well, I prefer some other, more than others, that... I mean, it really doesn't matter what you play on. You're going to find a game on everything that you like or that you have in my house. Um, PlayStation 4, I'm addicted to Grand Theft Auto. I know that Grand Theft Auto is on PC as well. Yep. Um, Elder Scrolls, I prefer it on PC. I'll level you up. But as far as AAA games, my gosh, if you knew what I spent on games every year, um, I have to say Elder Scrolls is my favorite. Can't hear you, Fred. You're actually doing all-time favorite. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting a lot of shuffle. It might be you, Caitlin. I'm not sure, but the, all of this, all of this, to basically say My that favorite. we're coming up with, <laughs> yeah, all of this to say that we're coming up with our brand new game, uh, with our brand new show. I'm sorry, and that is called AAA Anonymous. I send the link in the chat, and it's every Sunday night at 9:30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And yes, yes, it is hosted by the great, the fantastic, the cynical. The, 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 the obnoxious Steven Stanisiewski and AAA Anonymous is a podcast that is seasonal. We'll be focusing on one specific game at a time for a specific season until the next addiction comes in and gets us away from that game and next into the next one. So we feel like it's a really good balance between this Tuesday night show, which is all about the news, all about the hot stuff that's coming out, and uh, actually talking more in depth about a specific game, a game that most of us are probably playing. I suggest you check it out. And we might end up developing a few of these little puppies. It's called AAA Anonymous. And the first one is this Sunday night at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Please come check it out and support it. There's a very long story to say we'll be on the air Sunday night. We'll do giveaways, which are just giveaways for AAA. No indie games being given away during AAA Anonymous. It's all big mainstream stuff. Come check it out on twitch.tv slash opnoobsonline. Then to be found just like this show on our YouTube channel and our iTunes. This is opnoobs.com, PC Gaming by PC Gamers. Thanks everybody for tuning in and we wish you all a very fine evening. You guys have a great night. Oh, 
will be posting this show on iTunes for the very first time in our life. Jazz Hands. So come check us on iTunes. You'll find the link on the website. Jazz Hands. Thanks, guys. We love you. Bye.